Thank you people for coming to this humble and great event, celebrating this new creation, a product of our students with the support of some teachers and administrators that believed in Si Se Puede. Aptly titled Chicano Legacy, this vast mosaic mural is a result of demands from Latino students to have their art and culture recognized permanently on campus. Located at the University of California, San Diego at Peterson Hall, its images depict concepts and beliefs ingrained in Latino culture for millennia, as well as iconic San Diego landmarks such as Chicano Park, the Coronado Bridge, and the Border Wall. In a small way, the student's intention was to illuminate a path towards a different kind of campus. Well, the push for um, some kind of student-directed art piece outdoors at UCSD was actually a long-standing desire on the part of the students. It slowly became a demand um, around 2005, six, seven, there had been a series of racist incidents on campus. And then there was a Latino student town hall meeting, um, which kind of addressed a number of issues, including the racist incidents, but also brought up the whole notion of changing the campus climate through transforming the built environment. So the whole issue of art came up again. Um, we on some of us on the faculty and staff um, presented slides at that town meeting, which said, um, here's what the buildings that you're familiar with, Peterson Hall, the big lecture hall, would look like with color on them. We didn't have any art, but we had local artist Mario Torero throw up some colors on the back of these buildings on PowerPoint, essentially. And we showed those at the town hall meeting. Well, students got very excited. I said, my God, this completely changes the climate, just to see the color on these kind of dead gray buildings. Um, and so from there um, began a series of meetings that I think are documented in the film, where staff people like Patrick Velasquez began to meet with students to determine the content of the piece that they might want. And that's when the whole thing got rolling. It was, um... I think a great accomplishment because as Professor Mariscal systematically presented it to various administrators, he showed it to the chancellor, um, a draft on, on his PowerPoint. He showed a PowerPoint draft or mock-up to the chancellor, to the vice chancellor of student affairs and faculty and other administrators. And they all told him, this will never be on our campus. We'll never have this on our campus. That it's too radical, it's too much in your face. And furthermore, that the Stewart Art Collection has jurisdiction over all the public arts that's displayed on campus. And that this doesn't fit in with them, they would never approve it, and so this is not going to happen. So in, in light of that opposition and all the unified action, particularly by students, again, it was the students that fought for the mural, it was really, really gratifying to actually see it up there. And of course, at any level, it's just a beautiful mural. It's a beautiful piece of art. And it seemed to finally be a major statement on behalf of the institution and at least the students and, and people of color at the institution that we have a place there too and that we belong here. We're not going anywhere. And this mural speaks to the kind of communities that we actually have both on the campus and off the campus, which we, we very seldom see. Every time I'd come to the mural, it's, it brought a sense of home to me. Um, because of the history around the United Farm Workers Movement and the fact that my parents are um, farm workers in the Central Valley. Being able to see a little bit of them in the mural uh, was really significant and helped me with just feeling identified like on campus. On a day-to-day -day basis, I don't see that many people who are also Latino or, you know, who I can relate to like that. But when I see the mural, it kind of reminds me that there is kind of a space for me here. Every time I walk past it, it inspires me to just be proud of where I come from. Um, it also inspires me to tell others to be proud of 
where they come from, whether it's um, actually like Chicano or a different culture. There were also other elements of things that were happening around the school uh, that was part of the mm, a protest or at least a concern, like what we have there on the wall, there the health for everyone, education for everyone, because there was always, at that time there was a crisis in which it's still today about education, that health and education is only for if you have money, not if you're poor. So this is, this is elements that we, when we spoke about Chicano, we spoke really about humanity. And that's what was, it became very beautiful because we were speaking for everybody. And everybody could feel that element and there was a connection here with the public. No longer just as a Mexican thing, a Chicano thing, but it was about the school, the student society, the world because of our, our, um, the importance of the environment, sustainability, and the health, and the art, culture, all together. To fully understand the significance of the mural, you have to look back at how UCSD started and the foundation of the third college. From the late 1950s, when it was decided to locate a new University of California campus in La Jolla, the nature of the campus was set. Isolated from urban spaces and communities of color, UCSD has been a site of struggle for over half a century. UCSD opened its doors in 1960. By 1968, when the nation was rocked by radical change, the student population was homogenous. Only a small handful of African American and Latinos were enrolled. Around this time, the Black Student Council and Maya, now Mecha, decided to intervene in the planning for a third college. They proposed a college where students made decisions, classes reflected the history and cultures of their communities, and greater numbers of working class students would attend. Professor Carlos Blanco was instrumental in getting the college open. I came to UCSD in 1964, and there were no students at all. No students of color, you mean? No, of any kind. Oh. It was all faculty and no students. Oh. The next year, about 150 students came in, uh, the best in California, you know. And of course, there were gringos, naturally. The student's preferred name for the new college was Lumumba Zapata, in honor of the legendary revolutionaries Patrice Lumumba and Emiliano Zapata. It was to be a different sort of college with an emphasis on civil rights, social justice, and the application of academic knowledge to real-life problems affecting working-class communities. Third college, um, as you know, it was opened in 1970, so that was at the peak of all of the social movements taking place in the United States and around the world. And um, the founding students and some of their faculty supporters, among them were graduate students like Angela Davis, um, uh, radical professors like Keith Lowe. And the emphasis was really on civil rights, on access to higher education, on women's rights. That was a big part of it in the early days. Um, and a lot of the major movement figures in those days came through um, Third College at that time, people like Cesar Chavez and others. We a different college from Ravel. We were gonna have uh, Latin studies, uh, Latino studies, it wasn't called that at the time, but, and we were gonna have more African stuff and this and that. So let's have a meeting. The future, the already appointed uh, head of the third college was a historian named Rappaport. And they called us for a meeting. So we got together, we, without them, and somebody in the, you know, one of the students, uh, or two students, or three students, and Angela said, no, we don't want to give them a program. We want the whole college. I mean, the students said that. So we started planning a whole college that would accommodate the desires of the black and the Chicano students. Working across ethnic lines, students from every background were united in their goals and worked as one. And one day, very simply, uh, the two groups, BSU and Mecha, 
uh, came together. And, uh, but not only in terms of alliances, you know, I'll support you, you support me. Of course, that, that was done. But the only place in the whole country were the BSU and a Latino organization, to call it that. In this case, Mecha. Mecha had meetings together. By the mid-1970s, the Lumumba Zapata dream had defaulted back into the status quo. It was founded to be a, a fairly radical college, and by the late 1970s, that had been removed by the administration. And it, it had a fairly standard curriculum, certainly by the time I got there in 86. In 1993, Third College was changed to Thurgood Marshall College after the first African-American Supreme Court Justice. Marshall had won fame in the 1930s and 40s fighting for school desegregation. He famously argued the Brown versus Board of Education case in 1954. In 2010, the spirit of the Third College was rekindled through the students' responses to escalating racial tensions at UCSD. Racist incidents like the so-called Compton Cookout Fraternity Party and the discovery of a noose in the library ignited a firestorm of activity from student organizations across campus. It just so happened that um, this was one of those school years, the 2009 to 2010 school year, was one of those academic years in which UCSD's Black Student Union and Mecha chapter worked very closely together. In an act of solidarity with Mecha, the Black Student Union demanded that the mural be made permanent and that additional artworks that represented communities of color be created on campus. In terms of BSU, we initially reacted to the situation, but we kind of continue our organizing efforts. We continue uh, to push for the things that we've been demanding for it for the past like year or two in terms of like yield um, and, and different programs and more institutional support. Uh, but we also like came out with like tangible demands for the university. We went home and we strategized and we organized and we came up with like uh, crucial demands that we felt were like. At, at some level holistic that address different areas of the campus climate, uh, definitely yield, retention, campus climate, um, institutional support, things like that, um, and definitely funding. Um, so yeah, that's how we reacted, definitely with, uh, with mass mobilizations, with protests. Uh, we organized a teach out and a teach in, um, and we're able to garner a lot of support from students and community members from San Diego and up and down California. There were demands that we felt like were going to um, help us shift uh, campus culture and climate and uh, one of those things is this mural behind me um, and that that demand was included after all the labor that um, Chicano, Chicano Chicanx Latinx students put in to get the Chicano legacy mural up because we knew that re representation was so critical and like I know the first time I saw that mural like I felt a sense of warmth of like, okay, despite all of those moments of not feeling like I belong here today, this right here makes me feel like I deserve to be here. And, um, and more art like that, hopefully we would have students have those moments of like, okay, like it, the push is worth it and um, somebody, saw, somebody is choosing to see me. And, fought for this so that I felt like I was being seen at some point. The creation of this mural was because students organized together and demanded the university know, you know what, you're not listening to me, so here, here are the demands, and we are going to protest and make sure that you know and everyone else knows that we need to be heard and these things need to be done. You know, these are things that should have happened years ago and they're still not being implemented. Um, so I think that's, that's a lot of the student activism work um, that for me, I've seen UCSD um, kind of only responds to, <laughs> or um, it kind of like gives it a, a driving force to be able to create changes like this. One of the things I think this film is helping to do is to talk about the way in which students were demanding a change to the physical space of the campus. Um, uh, many students have always found UCSD campus to be very sterile, 
very gray, uh, very corporate looking. Um, it's probably even, even more so now. Uh, and now with the trolley coming in and these giant gray pillars going up, um, it looks more like a corporate park. Um, so um, one of the things students always wanted was a change, change in the built environment, and that included public art. I think anything that can broaden the, the uh, experience of our students and enhance interactions with other people that represent our diverse campus community will be very positive. And we're hoping that that will be exactly what's achieved through this mural. Now that the project had the green light, it was up to Peruvian-born muralist Mario Torero to bring it to life. It's been three years from the moment we got together with the students trying to figure out what we're going to do. We went through all that. We uh, decided to do a mural and, and now here we are finally at the wall. The wall is ready to go. And I don't know if you might see the, the tiles on the floor and they're about to place the first, the first panel up above. The mural is around 17 feet by 57 feet almost to be exact. The practical question arose, how does one make a large mural whose colors will not fade over time. Mario came up with a novel solution. Painting murals is almost like a temporary installation. In order for something to be truly permanent, it should be done in mosaics. After intense uh, search, finally through some tips, and some national tips, we were given uh, uh, this uh, tip about a group of Chinese artists, muralists, Chinese muralists that had, been, uh, had gotten together and have been doing mosaic murals in a really fine way, very successful at it. And so they sent us some samples and wow, we said, this is it. Mario was invited to China to sign off on the project. Human faces we were sending, this diversity, have, were like rainbow faces. I wanted to project across the reflections of every color that the sun could possibly bring out. And so they got the hint, and I told them, if anything, don't lean too much to this side. If you want to lean on that side, go for it. So I gave them certain freedoms here. But they stuck to my directions, to my colors, and they were able then to. And it took a while because they didn't even have colors. They hadn't even worked with the colors that was after, some lilacs and purples. So it took some time. The, the project extended because they went throughout all China. Who knows how far they went to try to get them. They switched even to glass, stained glass. So there's a mix here of mosaic with, with glass, mosaic glass. That's why soon you'll see what we're talking about, this, this vibrations. And we still haven't seen it in the light of the sun yet. After a lengthy process, the day finally came to unveil the mural. Students, faculty, and staff anxiously awaited the moment. And we appreciate the great vision as well as the leadership that went into this on behalf of the students, the faculty, the staff to add more public art exhibits to the UCSD campus and to showcase uh, all the various underrepresented communities that really form the fabric of our society. I think it's terribly important for the campus in terms of enriching our lives, but it also uh, speaks to the dialogue and the education that this can be used for to educate faculty members as well as visitors about the struggles and the histories of underrepresented communities because it is this legacy that absolutely needs to be communicated. This mural speaks all that the institution will not and all that we as students fight for every day. Our story, our struggle, our love, and our resistance. This is only the beginning. Whether Chicano, Chicana, Latino, Latina, Black, Queer, Pinoy, Pinay, Middle Eastern, or Asian American, we are all present in this victory. Gracias. Tupac once said that 
if you see a rose growing out of the concrete, you're not going to hate on the rose. You're going to be like, oh shit, there's a rose growing out of the concrete, you know? The mural behind me is that rose that grew out of the concrete. Ready? Ready? Yeah. It was student empowerment. It was student movement, along with us as faculty members, along with us as staff members, along with us as UCSD community, who really got that change going. It wasn't from the administration, it was from the students. The students pushed the administration to wake up and to see that needs weren't being met. And that's why we have a Black Resource Center. That's why we have a La Raza Center. You know, those things did not exist before 2010. And the students fought to have representation in whatever way it was. It was physical representation of the Sojourner Truth statues or the Chicano art murals. It was all led by students, okay? Faculty helped, important faculty members like Jorge Mariscal helped in big ways to make sure that certain things happened on this campus. but. Really, the push came from the students and got sustained by students and faculty and staff members kind of coming together as a community that was dedicated to diversity and equality and gender inclusion to make sure that these things kept getting pushed because there was a lot of pushback. After the mural was unveiled in 2011, the door was opened to build several more public art pieces on campus but not without opposition from the Stewart Collection, an organization that has had a monopoly on public art at UCSD since the 80s. In the 1980s, um, there was this unique situation where uh, a wealthy man in La Jolla, um, De Silva, um, decided to donate money to UCSD on the condition that UCSD agree for him to fund art that would be on campus. So this man, De Silva Stewart, um, essentially was using the campus as his own kind of art park. Um, and so um, UCSD agreed, the chancellor at the time was someone named Richard Atkinson, um, signed a contract, which gave the Stewart collection, coming from this man, De Silva, um, a monopoly, essentially, on what could be built externally on campus in terms of art. And so you had a committee formed of art experts, um, maybe one or two faculty from the Visual Arts Department at UCSD, but mainly were people from New York and London and LA, you know, the art capitals of the world. Um, not a very diverse committee. Um, deciding on what the rest of everyone else at UCSD would see in their daily lives, whether it's staff, students, or faculty. This is a unique relationship. Why does UCSD keep renewing their contract with the Stewart Collection? The question of why UCSD would keep renewing that contract is not well understood to me anyway. Uh, I, mean, I think you'd have to ask a chancellor why they renewed it. Um, the one thing I can say, um, coming back to the mural, is um, the chancellor at that time, Marianne Fox, said to us when we were fighting for the mural, because it took two years to get it, um, she never said, you can't do this. Um, now, the Stewart Collection said, you can't do this. But Marianne Fox told me personally, go ahead and try. So she was giving me the green light, so to speak, to try to get around the monopoly, which it took two years to do, but we were finally able to do it. The new chancellor has been helpful on some things, Chancellor Kozla. He was helpful with the Sojourner's Truth statue, for example. Uh, because again, that, that was something that the Stewart Collection people tried to block. Um, they brought in their biggest donor and said to the chancellor, you're not putting the statue up. And to his credit, Chancellor Kozla said, yes, we are.
In 2015, the Sojourner Truth statue, conceived of and requested by students who studied truth in their first year program, was installed at Marshall College. I think it, it diversifies the, the artwork that's on campus. Um, the, the other sculptures on campus, more of them tend to be um, abstract, but the fact that it's here is, is uh, definitely the result of the requests that students were making after the incidences in 2010. They wanted more identifiable um, markers on campus that said, we're included, we're here. The Sojourner True statue means a lot to me personally and also to many of my students. And it's not just black students, it's students from all different ethnicities and genders. I've seen students over the years um, interact with the statue in really interesting ways. Um, during graduations, People put stoles on Sojourner and take pictures with Sojourner with the academic stoles on and themselves right beside her. People are hugging her. Seeing people, um, students just kind of sit on the bench right beside her and study. Um, and some of them are praying. The Black Legacy mural was also unveiled in 2015 at Price Center East. The mural was part of the original BSU demands after the cookout in 2010. Created by the artist Andrea Rushing, it depicts more than two dozen important historical figures as well as UCSD alumni and faculty. We worked with an alum, Manilita Brown, who's a local artist, uh, to help us identify other um, visual artists in, from San Diego. and. Um, for them to kind of show uh, Black Student Union members their artwork and kind of what their vision of the, uh, the mural would be and their concepts. Um, and then the students selected an artist through that process. Students wanted to use it as a teaching tool as well and so um, created tabletops that were bios of each of the folks um, in the mural so that it's, again, help, helping educate students and uh, for students to understand the contributions that our community has had not only at UCSD but uh, nationally. The students, staff and faculty who advocated for these public works of art did not believe that they would solve the long-standing problem of UCSD's elitist and often exclusionary institutional character. But they did believe art with roots in underrepresented communities would contribute to a more welcoming and democratic campus environment. The very first time I saw this mural, um, it was I was trying to look for a class actually, um, and I, I had heard that there was a mural, but I had not really seen it in person. Um, so when I was like walking, and I was actually walking um, through here, and I saw it, I was actually really, first of all really shocked of how big it was, um, and then I immediately smiled because I was like, oh, okay, like coming from a low-income family, coming from like a place where like predominantly Latinx and Chicanx, like coming to this campus was really isolating for me. And so being able to see that mural kind of, it made me feel that some, somewhere on campus, someone sees me. The, the mural to me is more of a symbol of a victory that um, a coalition of uh, students across the, the spectrum of backgrounds and um, as well as staff members and, and, and professors who who banded together and, and, and you know, demanded that the administration make this an, a permanent installation. The mural has also been made by students to let other students know that it's okay to be on campus and to be a minority on campus. So that's why I think past student activism should continue on, as well as like other students encouraging other students to voice their opinions and to say like it's okay to be a minority on campus. This kind of stuff like the mural and having artwork on the campus that reflects um, the people of the state, the people of the country, the changing demographics is also really, really important. So having an opportunity to have more artwork that people can see that they can reflect uh, on really matters. And I know that we've made some strides on the campus, so not just the mural here, but there's the Statue of Sojourner Truth, there's an African American mural, some really great things happening on the campus. Um, but I think we need more of that, and that's only going to help us to be a better campus. The student activism that preceded the murals and other artworks continues today and will continue into the future. 
the basic issue of underrepresentation of black and brown students in particular compared to other UC campuses has yet to be resolved. For me, I just get involved on campus and I tell other people about like my struggle of being a minority on campus. I am happy that there is, I guess you can say, um, some recognition of Mexican American history on campus, especially at UCSD where I feel like the Mexican American student population isn't really represented. Today, UCSD enrolls the largest number of students in San Diego County with a total campus enrollment of 35,821. In 2016, of the 28,127 undergraduates, only 13% are considered Mexican Americans, with African Americans at a staggeringly low 2%. It is very important for students to be able to see examples of people who look like them. We didn't really have that much on campus prior to 2010. UCSD is a public institution, it's for all the different people of California. To, it's, anybody can come up here if they want to, but unfortunately because this place is in La Jolla, some people feel like it's not accessible to them. Even though UCSD has much to do, if it is to be a true public university accessible to all communities in California, the mural continues as a lasting monument to the dedication and perseverance of generations of UCSD student activists. It also provides hope to current and future students as they make their way through the maze of higher education. So what is the legacy? the legacy that past student activists have left for present and future students at UCSD. I think that the legacy is that um, to stay true um, to your own experience and how you would like the next generation of students to have a better one. I mean, I think it's critical to know what was done prior to your time as a student here. and. I'm a strong believer of like um, our job or as people is to leave this place, this earth, better than we found it and part of understanding that is knowing the issues and the strategies people have used before you and use that to, to know how to navigate this place and who your allies are and what opportunities lie, because there's still plenty to do. I think doing the messy work and hard work of getting to know people outside of your own experience and your own communities and challenging the biases you have and really thinking and reflecting about how your voice can be used to amplify other voices or to um, fill the silence um, sometimes. The reason I do it is for the people that are coming after me because, again, like everything that I got and I was fortunate enough to have here on this campus was because those students fought for me. You know, like that mural wasn't, it's not, it didn't just happen overnight. You know, students, students were like, um, during the Compton Cookout, they, they were like not sleeping for like two weeks. They didn't shower. They were like, um, you know, like, holding down the chancellor's complex and things like that, like they were doing that work and they were still working and they were still students. Like they were, they were putting in that work so that I can be able to see that mural. And so for me, that's why I continue to do the work that I do because I know that the students that come after me are going to be able to have something that I didn't have. I like, I like that uh, there's kids here, the revolt part, because we know about the back of the history, Cesar Chavez and, 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 and the pyramids and stuff. And, uh, but this area here, this corner, is actually the, the movement of the students that through revolution, through protest, through uh, uprisings is how change happens. This mural came out because of a protest, really. And so that's important to capture here. And the elements that they say on it, like basta, that's enough, uh, education for all, health for all, is still something that we're still talking about. I mean, you would think that this is history, but no, here we're going almost oh, 10 years later, and we're still talking about that. We will continue to talk about that. So the, the mural is speaking louder than even when we, when we put it over here. It makes more sense. And it's, it's the acceptance takes time for people to change, but this helps in that change a lot.